Okay, so next let's look at the keys to achievable outcome on page 56. Now we've already spoken about how to set a SMART goal. We've already spoken about the five principles of success and saying that we need to know our outcome, we need to take massive action, have sensory acuity, behavioral flexibility, and of course then operate from a physiology and psychology of excellence. So the keys to achievable outcome, it's a great way of actually helping the client to become more clear about their goal as well. So they can become clearer about the outcome that they want to achieve. And we begin by actually asking ourselves, you know, how is it possible that they don't currently have this outcome that they want? Now, I remember being a little boy, walking from home to school, and then from school back home again in the afternoon. My dad used to work on the railways, and we live near a railway track. And I would walk down the hill and get to the railway track. And there wasn't a footbridge back in those days. You just had to walk across the track. And so you would get to the track and I would stop. And I would look. Look left. Look right. And then listen. Because the track had a bit of a turn, a bit of a bend. And so I would stop, look, and listen to notice if there were any trains coming. And then, of course, if the if coast was all clear, I'd quickly cross the track and go to school. And in the afternoon, come back home and get to the track, I'd stop, look, and listen before crossing the road. Stop our internal dialogue. Stop our mind running around and wanting to tell the client what they need to do. We want to look across at the client. Notice what are they doing? What are they not doing? What's their body language like? Listen to them. What are they saying? What are they not saying? How are they saying what they're saying? What are their predicates? What's their modal operators? What's their model of the world like? Now we're going to talk about each of these things. But it's important to just stop, look and listen as we are fully engaged with our client. So we ask the client first of all, what is it that they want? What specifically do you want? And it's important here that the client puts it in a positive. You see, people are so good at telling you what they don't want. And so we want the client to tell us what is it that they do want. If they say, I don't want to be poor, I say, okay, so what do you want? Number two, we're going to ask the client, where are you now? So what's the present situation what's currently going on for the client now it says there in brackets associated there's two words in NLP associated and dissociated associated is when you are looking through your own eyes so if you are looking at the screen right now to watch them this recording you are associated you are looking through your own eyes dissociated is you see yourself in the picture so imagine you could be a little fly on the wall and you see yourself down below watching the screen as you watching this recording so we want the client to be associated. We want the client to really tell us what are things like at the moment. Where are they now in relationship to this outcome that they want? Then number three, we want them to specify the outcome. So what will they see, hear and feel when they have it? We want to get very sensory specific here. We want to make it a very desirable and tangible so what will they see, hear, feel, etc. when they have it? And as they do this, we 
want them to have this 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 internal representation which is going to be really compelling now don't worry about the as if now and insert into the future just yet that is something we'll talk about later for right now we want to get a century specific representation of how will they know that they have that outcome so number four is that evidence procedure. How specifically are they going to know that they have it? Number five, is it congruently desirable? So what will this outcome get for you and what will it allow you to do? Essentially, this is the why. Now, I said to you before, we don't want to ask the word why. This is the why. Why are they doing what they want? Why are they doing this thing to get the outcome? You see, if your why is big enough, you'll find a way. But if your why is not big enough, then you'll find excuses. So as Robin Sharma said, if your goals don't scare you, they're not big enough. And so step number five is really, what is this going to get for you and what is it going to allow you to do? Again, this is going to help with the sensory representation of the outcome. Step number six is it self-initiated and self-maintained. So is it only for you? Now again, a goal can include other people, but ideally it's got to be for the client. Is it self-initiated and self-maintained? Does this client have input into the goal you see sometimes people set goals that are reliant on other people and I appreciate sometimes there will be some external influence to help you achieve your goal example if it was a business and I said I want to make a million pounds profit the external influence would be I need to have clients to buy my product but of course that is just them buying the product. I can still control the process. I need to speak to more people. I need to streamline my product. I need to streamline my sales process. I need to have the right price. So for the most part, I'm still in control of that outcome. Step number seven, is it appropriate contextualized? So where, when, how, and with whom do you want this outcome? And number eight, what resources are needed? So what do you have now and what do you need to get to be able to achieve this outcome? You see, if the clients never achieved the outcome before and they don't know how to do it, then I can ask, do you know somebody else who's done this before? So that they can go and ask them possibly to give them some advice and tips or they can model that person. If they don't, if they've never done it and they don't know anybody else who's done it, then could they act like they already have achieved it? And so if they can act like they've already achieved it, what would they have done to be able to achieve that? And that's a nice way of just spinning that and looking from it from a different perspective. So what do you have now? What resources do you need? And where, of course, can they get those resources? Where must they go and find them? Do they speak to other people? Is it a course that they need to take? Do they need to go do some readings? How can they find those resources? And then step number nine, is it ecological? So for what purpose do you want this outcome? What will you gain or what will you lose if you have it? What will happen if you get it? What won't happen if you get it? What will happen if you don't get it? And what won't happen if you don't get it? Now, those sound like the same questions, but in fact, they four different viewpoints. And it's a wonderful set of questions, actually, to get more specific. Now, if you look at the keys to achievable outcome, it's almost like the NLP equivalent of a coaching model. And so the client is going to come to you initially with this outcome that they want. But it's probably not going to be a smart goal. They're probably not going to be clear about it. So the keys to achievable outcome is going to help us to become much clearer about the outcome. And then the client can rewrite it as a smart goal. 
and then of course use the five principles of success so they have the outcome now they've got to go and take massive action which are the action steps the output that they're going to do and have that sensory acuity notice of what they're doing is it working is it not working so that they can make course corrections they can have behavioral flexibility and all the while operating from a physiology and psychology of excellence so we're starting to put these things together so my suggestion is go and do this as an exercise take your goal the one that you wrote down earlier about what it is that you want to get from this training and ask somebody just to ask you these questions now you could do them for yourself or otherwise just get somebody to read the questions to you and you don't need to answer them out loud you can just think about it so if you don't want the person to know what it is that your goal is you can ask them just to read one question think about the answer and once you've really considered it then get them to ask you the next question and of course also great if you go and utilize this with a client who's got an outcome that they want to achieve so that's the keys to achievable outcome 